Hello everyone, I'm Rick Jensen. Welcome to my fly bench. You know, in a previous episode on tying scuds, I was able to demonstrate a scud pattern that uses straggle string and scud back. But if you don't have those materials on hand, you don't have to rush out and buy them. There are plenty more common materials that you can make a perfectly good imitation of the freshwater shrimp with. And the pattern I'm going to show you today is actually one I rely on most of the time. I call it Rick's Scrub Scud. Rick's Scrub Scud. Did I say that right? Anyway, it's a lot easier to tie than it is to say. So let's take a look at the materials you're going to need to tie it. It is a lot easier to say than Rick's Scrub Scud. Yeah, let's look at the materials. <laughs> Okay, we're going to be tying the scrub scud today. This is what the pattern looks like complete. And uh, this is a number 10 Togans curved scud hook. And so what we'll do is put a fresh hook in the vise and tie one up for you. The great thing about this particular pattern and these materials is you can tie it to represent gamrus like this, 10s and 12s. But you can also use the same materials and tie it down to 18s and 20s and 22s for high lella if those are the majority of the shrimp in your lake. Uh, these patterns adapt very well, whereas the straggle string is great for the gamorous, but not so good for those smaller, smaller shrimp. So I'm going to pop that out of the vise and get a new hook in there for you. Togan's curved scud hook in number 10. And we're using our light olive 70 denier tying thread to tie that on and create a, get a base of thread on the, the hook there for you. So of course you will match the thread color to the color of the dubbing you're going to use. Today I'm going with an ice gullet dubbing in a holographic chartreuse, a diamond chartreuse. But you can uh, of course adjust your thread and dubbing as required. For the feelers, what we call the tail of the fly, I'm using a mallard flank in olive, dyed olive. And I'll just throw, oh maybe eight fibers or so in there. And uh, we'll, we'll go back up the hook a bit. I like to tie them in long, two wraps like that, and then shorten them up by just pulling on them until I get them the length I want. And then once I've sort of got the length adjusted, then I like to go down, holding those fibers towards me, and go wrap down into the bend of the hook, fairly far down. I like when those feelers sort of oriented down like that instead of out straight, okay? And there they are, they're going to represent some feelers very nicely for us. For our ribbing, we're using extra fine copper wire. And I had a piece of that around here, I'll cut a new one. I can't see where I left that right now. So extra fine copper wire in the natural color. And we'll get a chunk of that cut off. Bring that in there. A couple of loose loops. Tie that in. And then for the shell back, I'm using anti static bag, tapered anti static bag. I've got another video on how I tie the tapered anti static bag. If you could purchase it that way, that's great. I cut it myself, and uh, I like to cut it myself so I can get exactly the width and the taper that I want. So I'm going to capture that there and so have it centered on the back of the hook and then make sure it's wrapped forward and then back again. Nice thing about shrimp versus chronum is you don't have to worry about bulk too much. You're, uh, you're wanting a bulky fly. So I'm going to form a dubbing loop to uh, dub this fly because I like them brushy 
And so uh, I'm using my dubbing tool for that purpose. And there's various dubbing tools on the market. You can also just use your fingers if, if that's the case. Don't need a dubbing tool. And bring that thread all the way forward now to the eye. Just a little short of the eye. So I start slipping some dubbing into the dubbing loop here and we'll form a noodle. Uh, again here, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be super thick, but uh, you don't have to be uh, scared of putting too much in there as, as the uh, shrimp legs are kind of, the, the dubbing is forming the body and the legs of the shrimp. And uh, so you you can uh, put in a, what feels comfortable to you. Too much isn't too bad. Too little is, is fine because you can always build it up. Now we'll get a little more in there. Lengthen my noodle a little bit. A little pinch more down here near the dubbing, dubbing tool. And then we'll start to spin it. And one thing I like to do with the dubbing tool is after I spun it a few turns, I throw slack into the line and spin it again as it captures more of the fibers. And then I pull it taut again. And after I've done about a dozen turns, I sort of massage that dubbing. If there's some thin spots and thick spots, I kind of move it around and then continue spinning and throwing some slack in the line and spinning again as that starts to fix it into a more uniform noodle for me. And there we get, we've got a nice brushy dubbing loop and uh, dubbing noodle and here we go, we'll start winding that forward and you can see it's going to be fairly brushy which is just fine because again I say it forms the body and the legs and uh, where we go, we're building it up This. What is it called again? Uh, holographic chartreuse in the diamond dub. Very nice color. Gives a little pop to this fly. Go back a little bit, add some meat to the body of this fly. And there we go. We're going to tie that off right at the front here, just behind the eye. And uh, this extra dubbing that I cut out, I'll just pull it out and use it on the next fly. It's not wasted on the noodle. Pull it off and set it down and it's perfectly useful for the next fly I tie. Okay, we give that a couple of turns, pull out some excess there at the front of the fly. Now the only fussy part of this fly really is the anti-static bag shell back. As you pull it forward, you want to get it centered on the back. So I use my finger to brace it against the eye, use my left hand to throw about three loops over it, like that. Then I use my left hand to pinch the anti-ASB and pull on this end to center it and I give it about four or five really tight turns and then what we've got it in there we can cut off the tag end and I'll just give that a little little spin for you to show you exactly what we're looking at centered on the back like that that's what we want right down the middle of the back and now we bring our copper wire forward and this is where we use our dubbing needle our bodkin again so as I come around the far side, as I come underneath it and come up through the dubbing, I use the dubbing needle to extricate the fibers that are being caught by the wire. And it just helps keep them from, too many of them from being caught. And where the scrubbing comes in, that comes in in just a moment. I'll give you, give you a look at that in just a moment. So again, we're looping it around there. This forms the segmentation on the shell back and gives durability to the fly. And we're just pulling that down with the dubbing needle so we don't catch too much of it. Four or five wraps is good. We capture that at the front of the fly and give it some good windings in there to ensure it's well locked into place. And a couple in front and some more behind. And then we can helicopter that out of there and set that down where we can find it for the next fly. I hope I can find that. Okay, so the, drub, the scrubbing part comes with a, a brush that I've made out of Velcro, a little piece of Velcro that I have hot glue gun to a craft stick, what we used to call a popsicle stick. And it's the hooky side of the Velcro, not the loopy side. And I use that to brush down on the dubbing on both sides of the fly. I want to get and form those legs. I don't want anything above the body and if anything remains or is stubborn there I'll just be trimming them off with the scissors later on. So there we go. We formed 
nice bushy set of legs down there that'll get a haircut in a bit and a couple more wraps of thread now we're going to use some this time I'm going to use some Sally Hansen's just to touch up there and uh, send those into the wraps and then finish with a whip finish give it about four or five wraps of that pull it tight and now I just take the scissors and do some ju judicious hair cutting here to tame this fly a little bit and give it the legs I want. I'm pulling those fibers down, cutting about the length of the gape of the hook, and I'll turn this in the vise to cut off any errant fibers that are off to the side. I don't want any really off to the side or up the top. I just want them to, to be on the bottom. So we're just trimming that away. Any errant long ones we pull out of there. If they don't come out, we cut them off. And we've got a really good representation of a scud that's perfectly fishable. And if you lose a few, it doesn't take you long to tie them. I'd fish this uh, two different ways. I fish it on a full sink line. Depending on the depth of the water, I might go type 3 or type 6 sink line and uh, get it right down into the weeds and the marl or close to the debris, whether it's rocks or logs or whatever. That's what the shrimp like to be. And again, you're going to lose a few, but that's just part of the game and uh, they don't take terribly long to, to tie once you've gotten into the, the system and the pattern. The other way is under an indicator uh, send it down under an indicator with uh, a swivel above it a couple of feet above it and when you do you need a weight to get it right to the bottom sink it right into the bottom and then one crank up of your reel so you're drawing it up off the bottom about four or five inches and then you take your weight off and dangle it there under the boat and uh, you'll get hits. That's where the shrimp live, within inches of the marl. They, they're always found. They're rarely, if ever, found in midwater. And that's where the ex trout expect to find them. So enjoy that. Uh, you're going to enjoy fishing these, whether you fish it under an indicator, dangle it, or, or strip it in. And uh, so if you enjoyed this pattern, you enjoy my, my channel and this video, you consider subscribing and liking, hitting the notification button so that uh, you see more of my fly patterns when they come out. I'm wishing you tight lines and good luck. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.